Hi there, boys and girls. Brucey here. How are you all doing out there in these strange COVID times? I hope you're doing well and I hope that you and your friends and family are all safe and well. In the video today, I'm continuing uh, the process of talking about selling all your gear. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've been going through this process for some time now of <laughs> getting rid of all my gear. Obviously not all my gear, but that gear that I am just not really using um, is taking up space. Um, one of the biggest byproducts of this is that my productivity has, has skyrocketed. My workflow has changed and it's been really great. And I looked at a spreadsheet I've been compiling and I've sold now about 30 different bits of gear from pedals to guitars to synthesizers to just random, random bits and pieces. And Part of the reason for doing this video today is that um, another piece of gear got sold. It was an Emu Proteus synthesizer, something that I've had for 18 years, a, a long, long, possibly even longer. One of the first proper synthesizers that I, I ever bought um, in the, the 90s, I guess, so even longer than that. I've noticed that you kind of always go through this little bit of an emotional journey that you suddenly feel this tinge of sadness that something that you has been with you for so long is suddenly going and you start to regret and rethink your decisions. So that kind of prompted me to ask myself the question, do I really miss anything that I've sold so far? Now, the obvious thing would be guitars. Guitars to me are always an emotional connection you have with them. You always have this kind of emotional connection with them. And to me, have always been the hardest thing to sell up until uh, probably even six or seven years ago, I had never sold one of the guitars that I, I owned. I always felt that they were my children and I would be keeping them forever. And then, as I said, I'm going through this selling all your gear process. It suddenly made me realize the guitars that I sold, did I miss them? Do I miss them? The short answer is absolutely no. I've got my number one and number two and number three guitars that I, I kind of turn to on a regular basis. I'm still super happy with those. And I, I tend to pick those up the most anyway. So these other guitars were kind of extraneous to, to things that I was doing. It was nice to have them. It was nice to look at them. And it was nice to occasionally play them up. But they weren't really serving a function. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, a lot of what I'm about is working. I have to work. This is a work environment. And it's also a business. So these are also business assets which are not really being utilized to their full extent. So they have to go. Now, there are guitars in my collection which I have an emotive contact with. There's one in particular, or sorry, there are two in particular which will just never go because even if I never play them again, they are too close to me. They are, you know, my first first guitar ever. That's never going anywhere. But a lot of the guitars that came later were there to do to work functions which I never use. So do I miss them? No. Do I miss any of the other gear that I've sold? Some of the uh, synthesizers, some of the sound making equipment, the pedals. I sold a ton of pedals. No, I am really not missing them because I had. They were basically duplicates. You know, how many overdrive pedals do you really need? I have my favourites. I have the ones I like, and these were very much either similar or in the same family line. So I don't need them. You need the different flavours. It's good to have different flavours of overdrive, different flavours of distortion. But when you've kind of got lots of different tube scream clones, do you need them all? No. So they've they've gone and. To be honest, I, I don't really miss any of them. There have been moments over, particularly this time, but thinking back over gear that I've sold over the years, and there's there's one or two times where there's bits of gear which you kind of do regret selling because you, you kind of feel like you'd want to use it again or just, just have, a, have a go with it again, but it doesn't necessarily stop you working. The other important question is, is there anything that I've sold and bought again? Um, there's probably one or two items that I, I did actually sell, and this is not in this current uh, process, but a, a while back that I've sold and then had to buy again. But that was over a period of, you know, maybe six or seven years that I sold something, and then six or seven years later, I bought it again. And to me, that is you know, that's 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 a good bit of business practice. You've got rid of an asset that you, you've then got that cash and you can then go and buy it again later. Hopefully it stays at a similar price. The main thing about those items are they're all kind of low cost items anyway, kind of utility function items. There's nothing really big or expensive that I've sold 
and then rebought at all. So the, the simple answer is selling all your gear. Am I missing anything? No, I am I'm not missing anything currently at all. And it does feel again, as I've discussed before, that this weight is lifting off of my shoulders and the stuff that I am I have and the stuff that's remaining, I'm really using. I'm pushing it to its limits. I'm really extracting the most out of it. And to me, that's really, really exciting. And I feel more connected with everything and less connected with all this stuff. So this minimalist approach is really, really working well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, are you a gear hoarder? Are you someone who's been through this process? You know, and you can equally apply this to life. Are you taking the minimal approach to life? And um, yeah, love to hear your thoughts. Please put them in the comments below. I've been Brucey. Most importantly, above all this is stay safe and take care of yourselves. I've been Brucey. I'll catch you later.